Eleanor is the latest mightiest governor commander for cavalry and in this video we're going to go over a ton of different things I promise you this is not going to be the video that you think it is but I can promise you that Eleanor is exactly the type of commander that players have been begging the developers for for probably years trust me just give me a second let me cook okay don't worry we're gonna go over everything in this video but first what's going on guys Cheers. all right let's just jump right into this and where do we where do we even begin okay I think I'm good you know what let me pull back the curtain just a little bit okay typically when the developers announce or tease new commanders the community gets excited right because commanders are like the medium through which you're dealing damage in the game and so the latest and greatest commanders typically are meta and a lot of players get excited about what the new meta is going to look like moving forward and oftentimes the first look at these commanders people get excited for and as a content creator i've noticed and i'm sure the others have as well that typically if you get your video out before everybody else you're gonna see some good initial traffic on that video right because no one else has talked about it yet you're the first one people are excited about this and so you try to put out that video and of course you know Eleanor was revealed a couple of days ago and I wasn't home and also I was in the middle of Kingsland fighting in KBK that ended up going really well I'll make a video about that at a later time but news of Eleanor dropped and I looked at her kit and I thought oh my god finally finally a commander that I can just relax I don't have to get out of bed super early to make a video I don't have to rush to compete with everyone else making content about this because this commander is so bad that it doesn't matter this commander has the most lukewarm and boring and probably irrelevant kit that I've seen in a really long time it was a weird feeling actually right because normally I get really excited about new commanders and we just got Belisarius Prime and that was like kind of a mixed you know everyone's like oh this doesn't really look like it's going to be great and in the back of my mind I was like well maybe he's going to pair really well with the mightiest governor commander and then you know that'll be the missing puzzle piece and all this stuff and I was wrong this is just a garbage commander it's just trash now look look let me I'm getting I'm using spicy words here okay I'm using spicy words the commander's not in the game yet we have to see real world testing I, I have to you know is there a niche for Eleanor possibly may I even say probably but for 99 percent of you this commander is irrelevant now you might be asking Omnir why is why is she irrelevant maybe you haven't looked at her skills yet so let's quickly go over that okay so we've got a cavalry garrison and defense commander and this is pretty much in line with exactly what we expected everyone knew it was going to be cavalry once we saw Belisarius and even before that we expected it and everyone expected it to be a garrison commander defense tree is pretty common for garrison commanders this is cookie cutter what we thought would be the case okay let's look at the active skill the active skill has a 1000 ridge requirement and it's a single target damage skill that is not what we expected I predicted a few months ago that at least one of these two cav commanders would be aoe because that's been the trend over the past you know year or so maybe year and a half every cycle typically has at least one aoe commander and between belisarius and eleanor we've got zero aoe commanders okay we'll we'll talk about the implications of that later in the video but that's interesting to note 2300 damage factor jan ziska by the way this is a another cavalry garrison commander this dude came out at the end of 2022 i think september of 2022 with joan of arc prime literally higher damage literally higher damage factor so okay off to a bad start next we have a debuff for three seconds you take 10 percent less skill damage saladin's third skill takes 30 percent less skill damage all the time and 20 percent less counter attack damage all the time so taking 10 percent less skill damage for three seconds for an active skill it's not good I'm sorry that's not a good that's not a good active skill let's let's look at the rest of the kit here lion mother amazing little icon here this is cute very cute which is I like that but it's not you know what are we talking about here this commander's cavalry units gain 20 percent attack if this commander is serving as a garrison commander their garrison takes 15 percent less counterattack damage okay so again literally worse counterattack damage taken than Saladin and worse skill damage taken reduction in the Saladin and by the way Saladin also has 20 percent defense March speed and all of this works out in the open field now yes he's got much less damage here on the on the active skill but like literally Saladin is looking like a better garrison so far besides the talent build but like you get my point right like Saladin was one of the first legendary commanders added to the game and he's like on track to outpace the relevance of this brand new commander right away okay so all right maybe there's something else here that I'm missing let's look at the next skill this commander's cavalry units gain 15 percent defense okay so officially worse stats than Saladin officially 
straight up this is we are venturing closer to epic commander levels of stats here okay 15 percent attack 15 percent defense that's only five percent away from what eleanor is doing and Pelagius is no outlier we have like Ulji has the same thing 15 15 like this is Eleanor is creeping up on epic levels of stats and also the museum literally like a lot of these commanders have more stats than Eleanor from their museum alone and these are getting updated over time but what else is what else is on the skill okay stats don't make the commander these days all the other bonuses do so if this commander is serving as a garrison commander so all right again we've got another skill that doesn't work in the open field all right if this commander serving as a garrison commander whenever their garrison is hit with a basic attack it has a 10 percent chance to use the lily of the wild skill with a 10 second cooldown when you're hit with a basic attack implies that if you're being swarmed the probability that this triggers goes up because you're being hit with more basic attacks but that advantage is thrown in the garbage with the 10 second cooldown it's almost irrelevant if you're being swarmed because like okay sure the swarm is going to guarantee that you'll probably get this once every 10 seconds but like the only way to make this broken is if the cooldown was a lot lower right because then you could like rapid fire this active skill and then it's like okay now we're cooking with gas you really like are going to punish the rally if you swarm it but a 10 second cooldown is like a nail it's like a nail in the coffin for the skill almost I'm not saying it's nothing it's probably the most interesting interesting thing we've seen so far to be fair with you but like dang that's that's a long cooldown okay for the only exciting thing let's look at the fourth skill you deal 10 percent more all damage which is nice but like epic Belisarius has a fourth skill that says you deal 25 percent more damage if the troop has less than 50 percent remaining and I'm telling you from my current kvk where you can get support skills Belisarius' support skill is one of the best support skills for rally and garrison because this is insanely broken for rally and garrison so again I kind of feel like we're getting we're getting outclassed by epics but okay if this commander is serving as a garrison commander there goes the nail on the coffin for using this in the field that's three out of four skills here are only in the garrison for three seconds after using active skill up to five nearby ally or friendly tr friendly troops including this commander gain five percent bonus to damage dealt and for every allied or friendly troop nearby excluding this commander you gain an extra one percent all the way up to five percent okay so let's think this through for a second all right during the three seconds after your active skill you'll have minimum 15 percent more all damage okay and if you have five armies near Eleanor's garrison, then that bumps it up to 20% all damage for three seconds. 10 of it is on the three second timer. The other 10 of it is always. And also those five armies have the 5% bonus all damage. So that's why there's a long cooldown here. Cause otherwise she'd be giving a lot of all damage all often. Okay. Makes sense, I guess, but I'm still not sold. Let's look at the expertise. You take 5% less damage and deal 10% more skill damage to, to its current target, to its current target. Not even like, not even to everything, just, just your current target. So again, if we're looking at Jan Ziska, this one skill has almost as many stats as her entire kit and you get 10 percent skill damage always he takes less normal damage he dispels buffs and he gets 20 percent health on the fourth skill here and you have a 10 percent chance to gain 20 percent normal damage for three seconds with an eight second cooldown instead of the 10 second stuff we see on eleanor and i'm gonna be frank with you guys jan ziska is not really a meta garrison i mean we saw players in my current kvk try to use jan ziska in a garrison probably because that's what they had available to them and it doesn't really cut it these days i mean you you could you can make it kind of work but i mean gorgo's the garrison meta gorgo is the garrison meta okay and there's really no no debating that if you're not using gorgo you're like really not you're not defending to the best capabilities possible okay so yes yeah, some players still try to run yanziska some players try to use dito as well but what i'm trying to say is if we're comparing eleanor to yanziska we are comparing her to a commander that's not meta right so out of the gate we're looking at a pretty like i mean you're gonna have to do some gymnastics to make this niche work and someone's gonna figure it out and someone's gonna max her and there's gonna be some decent reports with her sure but remember what i said at the beginning of the video players have been asking for a commander like eleanor for a really long time and by that i mean they've been asking for less relevant meta releases over time players feel like they're releasing commanders too fast in rise of kingdoms even though the rate of commander releases has never 
really changed throughout the game's life cycle players have I guess always felt like it's kind of fast and you know one solution to that would be to release fewer commanders release them slower but the other solution to that would be to just release the same amount of commanders and just make some of them commanders that you don't really need now some players will get her and, and that'll be fine but for most of you you don't need her and we've concluded that you probably don't need Belisarius Prime either which means that this cavalry release is kind of uh it's kind of a dud right it's kind of a dud and the reason that this feels so bad and feels so weird is because typically calves get some 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 heat right they typically have been getting some fire I mean we, look at you know Huo Joan Nevsky William like these are some gas we've got even Zhang Yu sticks around in the seven March lineup for a lot of whales because he's just like he's that guy right so players expectations were like through the roof for this Cavalry release myself included and they've given us the most average least exciting like just mediocre content and and you know what this is kind of what players have been asking for you get to skip this you don't need this that's good if you're low on sculptures if you're free to play if you are always being careful about making the right investments well great news you don't have to feel pressured about getting this commander and probably not Belisarius Prime either to be fair with you so if you're free to play this is great now you can use those sculptures on something else get Liu Che I'm telling you he's like a must expertise he was the best performer commander for me and my current kvk and i used them with alex pretty much the entire time get joan of arc prime get huo get juge leon get herman prime those are all great commanders that have come out that are still good and worth investing in unless they break the mold somewhere where they you know change the skill they update these skills like if there's so much backlash that they change the skills of these commanders that would be probably a first and rise of kingdoms but the truth is if they don't do that we're quite a while away from another cav release right like we're going to see infantry, then we're going to see archers, then we'll probably see another leadership and range cycle, and then we'll see cows. We're talking a real long time, guys. So feel free to branch out and away from cavalry right now. Like, look, wait for them to come in the game first. Okay. Wait for Belisarius prime and Eleanor to come in the game. We'll see if there's anything that's crazy about them, but on first impressions, I'm bored okay now let's let's dive a little bit deeper here okay let's dive a little bit deeper here's some things that i thought could be the case with Eleanor before we saw the skills i thought when we saw belisarius prime that this would be the gorgo of cavalry not true unusable in the open unusable unusable not even close brother not even close in the field she gets a mediocre active skill 20 percent attack 15 percent defense 10 percent all damage five percent less damage taken and 10 percent more skill damage to one target not possible not even close to possible you can't even use her in kvk2 right like unusable in the open field here's another thing that i want to mention you can always connect the dots looking backwards you can't really connect them looking forwards it's possible that something down the line is coming a new kvk format a new formation a new power creep system a new relic buff for some of the other cavalry commanders there could be something coming down the pipeline that has such synergy with eleanor that when it arrives we'll be like oh, okay now she's meta right so looking at what we have in the game right now looking back at what we have i don't see anything here that's crazy but that's not to say things won't change moving forward but what that does mean is that for right now it looks like the cavalry meta is i mean at best it's holding on by a thread right we've i made the case before in a previous video that cavalry have kind of been open field meta since zhang Yu came out i mean they they're just faster than the other troop types they had in the past have been dealing comparable amounts of damage you know aoe damage skill damage whatever and so they've just been meta for so long and that's why people's expectations were so high but it could be the case now that like this is the weakest that cavalry have been in a while and again i'm not saying that they're weak in fact my huo joan performed so well this kvk so so well especially in king's land it was popping off boys so cavalry again still very dominant in the open field and if you are a cav main you should still like feel good about that like there's a lot to love about the commanders here this is the first cav release in years that we've seen that is kind of kind of a dud and it's unpredictable which is another thing that i think is good for the game okay i made a video a few months or a month or two ago trying to predict what these new cav commanders would be i was wrong 
and I'm glad I was wrong. I was, I'm so glad that I was wrong because the game was feeling solved. AOE skill damage. That's the meta. It's been the meta forever. And that is it. And the commander release schedule is kind of predictable. The commander power creep was getting predictable. Smite damage threw a wrench in there, but like overall, then we saw Herman prime come out and it's like, okay, that's still kind of the meta's AOE skill damage. Right. But right now this is an unpredictable release for cavalry we did not expect this we didn't expect so such lukewarm you know no power creep at all basically it's unpredictable and i think that's good for the game if we take a new direction then amazing if you're an older player you you should be excited about this this is new we've never seen this we don't know what direction the developers are going in do you think that this is a result of incompetence from the developers because i don't i think they knew exactly what they were releasing i think that they probably went through extensive testing with eleanor and she was just good enough to put out her kit just like this. That's what I think the case was. They probably tested her on the back end with commanders like Belisarius Prime, Jan Ziska, Heraclius, everyone. And they were probably like, okay, this is just enough newness to release her like this without adding power creep. And then now we can do something new. Developers have been doing this for over five years now. I think they know what they're doing. And I think that they intentionally released a lukewarm cavalry garrison. And like, look, infantry have been garrison meta since day one. That's been the garrison meta always okay and so to expect this like did this even have a chance at being garrison meta no i don't think it did right we've literally never seen garrison cav garrison be meta have they had usable garrisons in the past yes should they have usable garrisons yes has it been meta meaning the number one best garrison in the game i don't think we've ever really seen that i mean they gave cav garrisons a child with the mobility tree before okay like cav garrisons have never really been in like the best spot okay so this was an unpredictable release i think this is great for free-to-play players it's great for low spenders it's great for players who've left the game and are coming back because this is a new thing that you don't have to think about you don't have to worry about this is great for players who invested in huo and they were worried like oh my god is huo gonna fall off the meta or oh is nevsky gonna fall off the meta oh is willing but nope 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 you get to keep using them that's so good and this is unpredictable this is uncharted territory and that means that who knows what's coming next i don't know and that's exciting to me okay but the last thing that i want to go over here is what do we do now I think there's a lot of outrage about Belisarius Prime and Eleanor because players have been hoarding their sculptures for a real long time. And they were hoping that this is the moment. This was the time that they were going to get to dump their sculptures into some insane commanders and dominate on the open field like they've been doing for the past three years. And unfortunately, it looks like that's not going to be the case. I didn't realize this was skill locked. I'm one away. Nice. And so I do think that this does introduce a new problem because now we have a bunch of players with a lot of sculptures that don't know what to do. And this is not going to most likely not going to change the open field meta at all. And so we're going to be continuing to use the same meta since Herman prime, which came out at the beginning of January. And these new commanders are going to come at the beginning of May. And so that is literally four months of the same meta. And then we're not going to see a new commander release until probably mid or late June, which means we'll have five and a half or six months of the same meta. And that that is actually a new problem right because that's kind of boring right that's kind of boring i mean we're I, like the good thing about regular commander releases is that it's constantly throwing new things out there and new there's new things for people to play with and invest in and look forward to and work on and build towards and five or six months with the same meta oh man that's that's gonna be real boring for a lot of players right so a lot of the old players who've maxed out a lot of these meta commanders i feel like the moment i maxed herman prime i was like i literally don't know what to do with my account now right because i knew that we'd probably get leadership next it wasn't going to be a big deal range not a big deal i'm kind of i'm getting antsy right i mean like that's kind of the reason that i went in on gorgo is because i was like well i've got sculptures just laying around i might as well put them in gorgo like we'll see maybe she is good in the field right you know spoiler i didn't really use her in the open field this kvk so if you if you think you needed gorgo in the field you don't just use liuche with alex it's fine use them with cpo it's fine but as an older player who's got a over a thousand sculptures just laying around i'm like what do i do for the next however many months like i'm just gonna keep hoarding them i guess that's just a weird it's a weird spot to be in where like i have all these sculptures and nothing to do with them that's just crazy bro i don't think i've ever been in a position like this before in rise of kingdoms and certainly not for this long and i just hope that this doesn't cause a lot of old players to get bored of the game right that's what i hope i hope that 
that that doesn't happen who knows maybe i'll be like a meme lord and just expertise ragnar or maybe i'll like expertise artemnesia just because she's artemnesia right maybe i'll mess around in expertise pyrus just because i've heard he's got some synergy with liu che in the field and like let's see right like i don't know what else to do maybe i'll expertise lu bu because a lot of y'all probably can't do it because he's not in the game anymore like maybe i do that i don't know anyway those are my thoughts on eleanor for those of you that were curious no i don't think there's really a super hidden meaning behind her skills no i don't think there's some crazy meta pairing that you can do i don't think this really moves the needle that much at all for most players yeah, like it is what it is just read the skills she's she's kind of boring and that's a good thing but in in a really boring way let me know what you guys think about eleanor in the comment section below and also do you think they should change this do you think that they should change the skills of eleanor or the skills of belisarius as a result of the player's negative feedback i would love to hear that's an interesting discussion i don't think they've ever done that before they've they've like nerfed and buffed commanders like in the past but that was a long time ago we're talking about like i think chandra gupta had something that 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 went down or i think maybe artemisia at some point possibly i don't remember it could have been a mandatory i don't remember but either way let me know in the comment section below if you think they should change these skills i don't I think they should just leave them how it is just call it just rub your hands of it and say you know we're moving on let infantry and archers enjoy some open field meta time okay Cavs can take the back seat for a few months and then they're, maybe their next release will be insane as always while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton it'll push this video out into the algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace